Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one of a short series of videos um, that I'm doing uh, to show how to use the digital work software. Uh, if you want to get hold of it, it's free, and uh, I'm going to put a link in the description down below. So here we go. Let's. Um, this is the the software opened up. It gives us a nice kind of workspace uh, window and a whole lot of tools up at the top. I'm just going to zoom in a bit to make it a little bit easier to see. There we go. <clears throat> um, so in this video, I'm going to show you some of the basics um, th that you can do in digital works. And quite a lot of what you want to do is going to be um, done from this set of tools. So this line and this line. Uh, we've got some fairly standard you know, new, open, save stuff there. Um, so, focusing on this line here, uh, standard logic gates. We've got an OR gate, the NOR gate, we've got the XOR gate, the XNOR gate. The NOT gate doesn't have a standard buffer gate. Uh, AND gate, NAND gate. And I think I'll try state buffer, which we're not going to look at right now. Then there's a few uh, more complex things, uh, flip-flops. Again, I'm not going to focus on them right now. Uh, there's a thing called a tag here, which is mostly useful uh, for making things called macros, which I'll do in a, uh, a video in a couple of videos' time. Uh, there's a sequence generator, which I'm not going to look at. Uh, there's a clock, uh, again, which I'm not going to look at in this video. There's an interactive input, which I'm going to use. Um, you've also got here a switch, so you can connect and disconnect parts of circuits. I'm not going to show the use of that. Or of this. So this is ground, but what ground is, is a permanent uh, zero in digital logic terms. And um, the plus is, because it VCC, uh, that's uh, voltage, um, that's a, a permanent one in, um, in digital logic terms. So if you want a permanent zero or permanent one, then you can use those. Um, there is also here, I kind of skipped over it, there's an interactive input. We will be using this one. Um, and then in terms of output over here, we've got uh, LEDs, which are a very simple indicator, which show you whether something is, uh, whether a signal is a one or a zero. You've got slightly more complex outputs. Again, that I'm not going to show seven segment LEDs and numerical outputs. Um, and then finally on this line, we've got the ability to do, uh, to add text to the diagrams. Um, and I will show that, and to do wiring. And then on the second line here, I'm going to ignore the part sensor, um, and there's stopping and, sorry, running and stopping the uh, simulation. We'll show that in a little bit. Um, and then these three are quite important. The object selectors, so these uh, change the mode that you're operating in, and effectively what you can do with the mouse. Um, currently an object selector, which is a fairly kind of normal, straightforward uh, mode in which you can move things about, add things, etc. You'll see use. We've got object interaction for use when you're actually simulating, and then also when you're simulating logic programs. I'll show that as well. So let's crack in and get started. I'm going to start with uh, one of these interactive inputs. So we've got a grid, um, and... Uh, there's a certain amount of snap to grid on. We can uh, somewhere we can change the grid. I'm looking for it. Options. No, it's not there. There we go. And there's the grid set up here. So I tend to use just use the standard grid. Um, I don't always worry too much about precise, neat placement. Um, so if you highlight or you click on one of these tools, you can see this interactive input has now got the recessed look to it, and this is the active tool. The, uh, it doesn't show on the uh, on the cursor, on the mouse pointer that's moving around, what you're going to place. So you need to be looking at what you've got there. And I'm just going to click on about one of those dots there. And as soon as I click it, it creates one of those objects. It's... Looks slightly different because it's got the four corners with little boxes on, but if I click off it, then you'll see it goes back to looking, looking like it does up there. If I click on it, those corners appear, and they indicate that this is the one that's uh, currently selected. 
and it can be moved about. So if I, uh, as again, I'm in selection mode. As soon as you click, uh, let's create another one, you go back into selection mode. Um, if I click delete, uh, this is the delete key on the keyboard. It will ask me if I want to delete the object, and I'm going to say yes. I'll zoom back over there, so we get rid of that. And I can uh, click to select and drag an object around, or I can do it using the uh, the arrow keys, which gives me actually a finer control because it doesn't use the grid, the snap to grid. Whereas if I'm using, if I'm dragging this around, it's got a snap to grid going on there, as you can probably see. Okay. So that's an interactive input. I'm going to also stick in a LED, which I'm going to do further over this side. Um, I'm kind of aligning those two things up. Um, and I'm going to add a uh, not gate, which I'm going to add uh, below those. I'm going to click on the center. I'm just going to line up with uh, with the wires there. Okay. Sorry, with the those previous components. So the next thing I want to show you, I've, I've deliberately placed those because I know where I'm going to put them. Obviously, you can move them around if you want to. Uh, I'm going to show you the wiring tool um, because you're not going to get very far if you don't wire some things up. So again, it's clicking on that to highlight it. And the cursor, when you're in the editing area, changes this to this thing that looks like a little pencil. Um, and if you click, nothing happens. Uh, and that's because you can't just put wires randomly anywhere. You need to actually connect elements together. Uh, so when I mouse over this um, uh, this input uh, widget here, I get the little box that comes up that says attach. And if I click now, so that's a left click that I've done. And as I, I've let go, but it has now attached this wire to that uh, to that input. And as I move around, you can see it's it's connected. Um, and what I need to do is to connect that to another element. So I'm going to go across to the LED here. And uh, you can tell when it's right again because the attach uh, tooltip comes up. And I'm going to uh, do a single left click there to attach it. Um, so having done that, it keeps you in wiring mode. It doesn't go out of wiring mode like it does with the uh, does with the other objects. Um, okay, so something I could have shown you, if you want to do multiples of the same kind of object, let's just do that with uh, LEDs here. I'm going to select that. If you actually, as you left click to place it, if you press the control key, it will keep that object selected so you can do more than one. And what I tend to end up doing is forgetting the last one to let go. So I've still got it attached, so I'll end up with an extra one, uh, which I have to delete. And uh, I'll delete it, yes. Right. In fact, I've got too many now here. Oh, I'm going to get rid of the bottom one. So, again, uh, a thing that I haven't shown you yet is that you can drag and drop uh, to select an item as well as, or select multiple items. Uh, but that's all fairly kind of standard Windows style editing stuff. Right, back to the wiring tool. Uh, I'm going to wire up the output of this uh, not get to the second LED over at this side. And I'm going to wire up the, the input to this wire here. Ah, now, so as we mouse over any wire with the wiring tool, it also gives us the option to attach, and we can attach to the middle of a wire, uh, which allows us to create branches in wires. So I'm going to um, click on here, so I could just go straight up. I'm going to make it a little bit neater by pulling it out to the side. I'm going to do a single click in space now, and that creates a corner for me. So if you want to make corners in your wires, you can do that. You can have wires at angles, so I could attach that there if I wanted to. Um, sometimes it's not so easy to get things as neat as you'd like, but I'm going to make this fairly neat to attach that. And the uh, uh, the the indicator that you've got two wires connected together is this little black blob there. If we go back into um, editing mode, I can actually select that blob and move it about. I want to move things. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all those items as a group, and then I'm going to do Control C to copy. I'm going to click off and do Control V, which will paste, and that's giving me a copy of that whole group. Uh, when pasting it does this automatic thing of doing it 
uh, down and to the right. Um, I would prefer it to paste where the mouse pointer is, so you can do more intelligent pasting, uh, but it doesn't do that. So I'm going to do a, a, another copy of this. I'm going to have four of these in total. Uh, Control V. So that's my fourth one. Uh, and if I wanted, for example, I can uh, click and drag on all these LEDs here and then move them as a group. So, so there's a lot of this kind of standard window editing with the, the mouse pointer. Okay, so what I'm going to add to this is um, where I'm heading is I, I'm going to have a little circuit with four inputs um, and I'm going to have one LED on the output, which I'm going to put down the bottom here. Um, and that output will only light up if the combination of inputs is going to be 1010, one, which is actually binary for the number 10. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the annotation uh, just so that I, as a, this is an excuse to show you this annotation tool um, and uh, to put some text in. Um, and that's brought up a pop up box. Uh, so this is, um, it looks a little odd to my mind because um, it looks like it's not interactive because it's grey. Normally things that are interactive in um, in pop-up windows are, are white and the grey bits are the things you can't interact with. Um, so it's, it's slightly um, non-intuitive, I think. And I'm going to put, uh, gonna, so I'm going to type in here. So yeah, you can highlight this text. Uh, input um, 1010, I remember so. Um, this is going to give a seven point text. I wanted to be bigger than that. So it's these buttons here. Again, this is slightly unintuitive to my mind, but I'm going to bump that up to 10 points. If I wanted it to be bold, yeah, go on, let's stick it bold. You've got these boxes here, italic. I've got overbar, which is quite useful for uh, particular things in uh, digital electronics. Um, you can even change the colour of it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to bold it and click OK, and that's going to appear where I'd originally clicked. And again, that's an item that I can move around. OK, so I'm. what I need to do is I need to, if I'm going to have 1010, I want to select uh, those inputs. Uh, what I've actually done is uh, creating these lines. I've got a line here. Uh, so for this input, this will be high or 1 if the input is 1, and this one is the opposite because it's inverted. So I can I can effectively cherry pick out of these eight lines the combination that I need to if I want to get this 1010, zero, one, zero, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to add an AND gate, and I'm going to do that below here. Um, now, there are a couple of things that this gives me an excuse to show that I haven't showed yet. So the first is if I right-click on this, uh, NAND gates. There are various options, but one of them is inputs, and I can choose between two. You can't have less than two for an AND, but you can have three and four input NAND gates. Um, and a four input NAND gate, if you, uh, in case you haven't worked it out or don't know, works like a NAND gate, but it's got four inputs. Uh, a NAND gate is, uh, uh, sorry, AND gate. I keep saying NAND gate, an AND, and gate is only only gives you a one on the output when all the inputs are high. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to do to show you with this is that I've clicked that to select it. And there's this little plus button here. Actually, what that is, is it's a rotator. So um, the cursor changes as I mouse over that to the little hand. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this around so that you can ro I'm rotate it so that it points downwards. And I'm going to just add an LED below it and wire that LED up. Using the wiring tool. And then I'm going to connect these using the wiring tool. So I want 1010. Zero, zero. So um, when I've got one on this input, then it's the top of the two lines that's high. So I need to go up to the, the top of those lines. Now, one thing I'm demonstrating here uh, subtly is that when you're wiring up things i find it better usually to so if um i'm going to want this wire here um and i could try and guess exactly where here is above my uh line 
uh, I've not done badly there. Actually, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> stretch this out and get rid of this. If I right click in empty space here, it gives me a thing called a tag which will connect it together, um, but I don't actually want it, so I'm going to click delete. So that allows me to kind of cancel having a wire if I want. Um, back to the kind of little conversation I was having there. Um, I find it easier or neater usually to start from uh, the thing that's fixed. So I'm going to start from the bottom here. I need to stretch up to. Um, uh, and I've got, yes, that's the right one. That's a one. But for a zero to be active, I need to be on the lower line, which is the inverted line. And then one is going to be there. And this is going to be the inverted line there. Um, I don't, uh, as I said earlier, I don't necessarily spend a long time uh, getting things absolutely neat, and you, you can have a lot of wires at an angle, but it, it does look better if you can make it neat. Right. So I've set up this circuit, and I want to actually see it working. Um, one way of getting out of the wiring tool, if I want to, is just to click on the object selector there. Um, but, but actually, I'm going to go to Objects Interaction Mode. Um, in Objects Interaction Mode, I can switch these inputs on and off, but nothing's happening. And the reason for that is because I'm not actually currently simulating. And in order to make the simulation work, I need to collect on, click on this Run button here. So I'm going to click on Run. It's now simulating. So these uh, LEDs, which were kind of, they were there and they were guessing what they might have been. Let's switch that off and show you. In fact, they've stayed stable on that state now, so no good. Um, if I click on this, they swap around. And so we're seeing the LEDs indicating the, the output there. And it says input 1010, so we've got 1. Zero, one, zero, and yes, that gives us the output that we want. And in this particular circuit, any other binary number that's been input will not result in that output because it's it's making sure that all four lines are exactly how it wants them to be. Okay. Um, the inputs are the only things I can interact with in this. If I don't switch the uh, simulation off. If I leave it running and go back to the object selector, I can still edit things. I can add things. I can move things around. Let's just move one of these to demonstrate that. And it keeps going whilst it's simulating. Uh, but if I want to change the status of that so that uh, the object selector will select it, I need to go back to the, the interactive, the object interaction, which can click there. Okay. And then the final one after these three is the logic probe. Um, so you can use this to find the status of any point, any any wire, or what whether it's got a high or a low signal at that point. Um, and there are three uh, states of this. Uh, so if I get that where the wire is and click, that's brought up a one to show me that that's high. If I go to this next bar, I'll go click, and that's brought up a zero to show me that that's low. There are some times when you have an indeterminate um, uh, uh, status, and if you click whilst it's indeterminate, it just won't show you anything. So sometimes uh, if you're getting nothing there, it might be because there's some issue somewhere else in your, in your software. However, I, having shown you this logic probe, I tend not to use it uh, because, as you might have noticed, the wires themselves um, the, they're black when they're one, and they're grey when they're zero. Um, and if I change these inputs, so I'll switch to the object interaction, then you can see the alternating of the different wires at different points showing that. So it's actually fairly easy visually to see what's um, uh, uh, what's at uh, a signal of one and what's at a signal of zero. Now. I think that's all the things that I was going to uh, show you in this particular video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to delve into this thing here, which is the part center, but that's it from me for now. <laughs>